and some more practice problems with anti-differentiation and a lot of these uh, right here involve the chain rule. F primed is sine of 2x and we need to find f. So what function has sine of 2x as its derivative? Well the negative cosine function has the sine function as its derivative so let's try negative cosine of 2x and we see that if we take the derivative of this we would get sine of 2x times 2 by the chain rule. So to get rid of that times 2 we need to divide by 2. And then of course we need to put a plus c. And if you wanted to write it as a negative 1 half cosine 2x obviously that's equivalent and that would be fine to write it that way as well. Okay, the next one, f primed is secant squared 5x. Well, the tangent function will be the antiderivative of the secant squared function. So let's try f of x is tangent of 5x. And if we take the derivative of the tangent of 5x, we get secant squared 5x times 5. So if we put a 5 in the denominator there, that will get rid of that extra factor of 5. And then, of course, we need the plus c. Next one, f prime is cosecant 3x, cotangent 3x. All right, forget about the 3 for just a minute and think cosecant of this times the cotangent of this. What function has cosecant cotangent as its derivative? Well, the cosecant function has negative cosecant cotangent as its derivative. So if we take the negative cosecant function, negative cosecant, and let's make that cosecant of 3x, negative cosecant 3x, and try this. If we take the derivative of that, we get a positive cosecant 3x cotangent 3x times 3 by the chain rule, so that means we need to divide this by 3, and that will cancel out that factor of 3 that appears by the chain rule. And then, of course, we need plus c. Okay, down to the next one, a similar thought process gets us our answer here as well. We need to find f of x if f prime is 3x plus 5 to the fourth. Well, we know typically when we have a, a polynomial, and, and this, if we multiplied it out, it would be a polynomial. And uh, we don't want to have to multiply that out because raising something to the power of 4 is a good bit of work. We could use the, um, the binomial theorem, but, um, but this is, what I'm going to do here is a little bit easier. f of x, let's try this, 3x plus 5 to the fifth, because we know uh, differentiating reduces the power by 1, so anti-differentiating will raise the power by 1. So we go from a power of 4 to a power of 5. Now take the derivative of this. It would be, the derivative of that would be 5 times 3x plus 5 to the 4th times 3 because we have to take the derivative of the inner function by the chain rule. So this is pretty close to what we have over here except we have this extra factor of 15 showing up and we can get rid of that. Just put a 15 down there. And now if you take the derivative of this, you would have 5 times 3x plus 5 to the fourth times 3 divided by 15, and that 15 would cancel out the 5 and the 3, and you'd have that. And the next one, a similar thought process here. f of x is going to be 7x minus 4 to the 4th, and if we take the derivative of this, we'll have 4 times 7x minus 4 cubed times 7. So we'll have a factor of 4 showing up from the power rule and a factor of 7 showing up from the chain rule, so that's a factor of 28 that's going to show up. So let's get rid of that, so we do in fact end up with 7x minus 4 cubed, and of course, plus c.